See, Parsons, I can teach you something. You know something? <laughs> I got to admit, that's one of the coolest things about fishing the walleye tournament circuit at its highest level. Not only is Jason one of the toughest competitors there is in the world of walleye fishing, he's also a good friend. And he came up to me at the last tournament. He says, you know, we should do a drop shot walleye show. I said, well, when, where? He said, I do it all over the place in northern Wisconsin. Let's do it. So here's the ultimate challenge. We're in a clear water northern Wisconsin lake, and it's the 4th of July weekend with all the boat traffic, and it's sunny, and it's been bright, clear skies, or at least like here, it's pretty calm. We've had some wind too. This is going to be one of the coolest walleye shows that you've ever seen. A trap shotting walleye. It's fun. It, it, I learned something. I've been doing this for 35 years competitively, and honestly, this is some of the most fun fishing I've had in my whole career. So come join us, and you too can get your next drop shot bite. <laughs> And I tell you what, the monsters are in here. You know, this is a popular fishing area with all these lakes around here. <laughs> it's so awesome. While higher pressure from holiday traffic and clear water conditions are contributing factors for exploring the use of drop shot as a technique for catching walleyes. Look at that thing. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Swallow, <laughs> there. as soon as it hits bottom, boom. Yeah. As with any technique, conventional or otherwise, everything starts with knowing where to look for walleyes on these smaller area lakes of northern Wisconsin during this time of year. A small bass. That's the cool thing about drop shots is you can catch smallmouth and walleyes on the same bait. It's yeah. awesome. I'm going to explain the types of areas that you want to look for during this early summertime and going into the summer months pattern to basically find these fish. Offshore humps like we see right here become extremely important. You want to look for those high spots and the fish at this time of year in many cases have migrated somewhat off the shorelines and they'll start congregating on these, these deep water humps. That doesn't necessarily mean the shoreline areas are out of vogue. What you want to look for there are any long extended finger points or saddle point areas from the shoreline, especially if there's deep water next to them. But those are the types of areas that concentrate the fish. So what you have to do is you literally drive over the top of these or you go along the edges. That's why we're always running a side scanning or structure scan type of scenario with a left and right view because that'll show you things like whether or not that high spot has rocks on top or a rock edge or a transition to rock. It'll also show you if there's a crown of weeds on top. In many cases, when you go over the top of the hump, you're gonna see the fish themselves because not all really great humps have rock and weeds. Sometimes it's sand, sometimes it's a clam bed. It's hard to even see you know, what, what is attracting the fish, but you'll see the fish as plain as day. So whenever you find a fishy looking spot or the fish themselves, it's a classic hunt them down, fish them scenario, try it out. Uh, they're there to feed, give them something to eat. While each angler could technically run three rods in the state of Wisconsin, to be efficient, Gary and Jason are each running two drop shot setups. Perfect. You know how I got that out of there? I'm really good at that because that's how I used to take the hooks out of Cabayas every other day. <laughs> One dead rod that is using the natural undulation of the waves for its action. Bite. You got one? And their main rod, which they are casting and twitching back. How do you feel? Just a dead stick, Gary. Good. <laughs> I got one off the back. Ooh, it is a wall. Uh, yep. Yeah. Got him. 
<laughs> nice fish. Nice fish. I got two yeah. lines out. <laughs> Here, I just got your rod free. I don't want to lose a rod. I almost lost that one. Uh, that's a pretty decent fish, Jason. Yeah, it is. Looks like there we go. Looks like he really wanted it too. Drop shot. Maybe, looks like you might need a pliers. Yeah, huh? he definitely wanted it. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Drop shotting for walleye. That's pretty cool. The smallies really love them. <laughs> well, there's no reason they won't work. We got a one. drop shot. Oh, you got it on the flat nose too. That was huh? on the flat nose minnow. Yeah. That's uh, that's, that's the max scent. Flat nose minnow. Yeah. Just on a Fusion 19 drop shot hook. What is that? About an 18 incher, maybe 17 and a half, 18. Yeah. He looks like he's a good fish. Solid fish. Yep. You ready? Cool. Let him go. You bet. There you go. Awesome, awesome. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Catch more fish. And Motor Guide. Accuracy matters. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole the ultimate in shallow water anchors. Northern Wisconsin has many diverse bodies of water, everything from darker tannic flowages to stained water to almost unbelievable levels of visible clarity. Crystal clear visibility may sound nice, but it often means an uphill battle with very spooky fish. This is what is invigorating about using a technique like drop shot, which is proving itself quite effective to catch walleyes under such conditions. It's really kind of cool seeing so many decent fish on a clear water lake. What, beginning of July? It's close to 4th, 4th of July yep. weekend, all the boat traffic around. They're still catching Clear water, them. Bluebird skies. Yeah. Additionally, utilizing existing beta on what is known to work on a lake can also help to tailor the effectiveness of your presentation. You know, this lake is, is notorious probably for a slip bobber bite. Yeah. Well, you, those are always a little bit higher off the bottom, so that's sure. why I increase this dropper. And bam, you got yeah. 20 yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's awesome. Sweet. So one of the first things you need to know about when using a drop shot rig is the distance between the hook and the sinker. You know, standard lengths are anywhere from 12 to 15 inches is usually where I start off uh, between the, the hook and the sinker. But today when I caught my first walleye, I noticed right away that the fish was up off the bottom a little bit farther. Uh, I had it in a rod holder just hovering off the bottom when he ate it. Uh, so the first thing I did was I switched rods and I, I immediately increased the distance between my hook and my sinker. I went from 15 inches to almost three feet and immediately we started catching more walleyes. So not only can you change hooks and different sinkers and that kind of thing, but you can also change the distance between those two depending on what the fish want for that given day. So keep that in mind when using drop shots. One understated but pretty cool custom mod Gary runs actually all the time, but seems especially prudent to note for this particular clear water type of bite is a G-Force Eliminator prop nut. It's an aftermarket stabilizer with heat sink properties, which sole purpose is to even further reduce any vibration coming from the trolling motor prop while increasing battery life. Pretty decent fish, Jason. Jeez, I didn't even know you had one on. Well, that is a good one. Don't mess it up, GP. This is the one. Well, that's like the kiss of death. Don't <laughs> mess it up. Uh, yeah, I saw him on the graph. That's I dropped right to him sure. and bounced it three, four times. Boom, right there he was. Most people wouldn't believe that, you know, on clear water. We're not oh. in all that deep water. Drop shot, Wally. Yes. Nice one. That's a nice that's fish. The one. Drop shot, fish. That's the one. <laughs> this is fun. You know, I've never really drop shotted for walleyes before. That's why when you said, hey, you should come, we should do a drop shot walleye show, I went, that sounds like it could be fun. GP, nobody <laughs> does this. <laughs> you no. Know? It's always jigging a minnow. Well, can you believe it? It's very effective. Right. I mean, it's deadly. We mark the fish. Drive over, mark it, put a waypoint on them, go back with the trolling motor and give it a shot. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works on clear bodies of water. Oh, wow. It's way better on clear bodies of water than it is in dirty water. Yeah, so yeah. The I fish can see that bait just hovering off the bottom and they come over. Oh, wow. Whew. Yeah, that was fun. I'll let this guy go. All right. 
great, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so you want a drop shot for walleyes. It's probably a good idea. Not many people are doing it, and it is really a deadly technique. You've got to start with the right equipment, though. Use a six to seven foot medium action to medium light action rod. I'm using a 6.3 right here. I couple that with a smaller reel. My personal preference is a size 10. That gives me an overall rig that's a lot lighter. I can actually, you know, use this all day long and I don't get fatigued. I'll couple that with Berkeley's new Fireline Ultra 8 Carrier. And we use it in eight pound test. Then I'll tie a liter of about six feet of 100% trilene fluorocarbon again in eight pound tests as the leader material. Getting right down into the business end, we use a Fusion 19 hook, like to use one aught size. The reason for that, it's pretty large gap. If, you, if you're a walleye guy, you're gonna look at this and go, wow, that's a big hook. But you wanna be able to bury that, the tip of the uh, point into a larger drop shot uh, bait like we have here and still get a good hook up. Then the business end here, like I said, flat nose minnow in power bait max scent has been the key. If you didn't have one of these on, you didn't hardly get a bite. That goes right down to the weight. Uh, use a 3A sound Strike King uh, drop shot weight, and that's it. This is the setup. If you, it, it's pretty simple, and if you use it, you're going to get a lot of fish. Oh yes! You got one. Nice. Is it wall? Is it I got him. Oh, he looks like he might be a decent one. Yeah, you never him. know until I get him in. Yeah, yeah that's a good fish. That'll work. <laughs> nice. nice. That you is just good. put that bait, a new bait on, didn't you? Well, I had, I cut that bait in half because it was all tore up and I never got a bite. Put on a brand new flat nose minnow. And first cast. You know, that's a good observation. Everybody in northern Wisconsin and in fact a lot of places in Minnesota think you have to have live bait. If you play around with the right tails and take the time to figure out the colors, Obviously, an inch shorter, they didn't mm -hmm. want it. That was the action they wanted. Exactly. And you can kind of unlock that key. And, and, and walleye's the most persnickety ones. They are. They, they, ham they hammer them. <laughs> That's there's, awesome. There's the result. Yeah. Right there. oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so the most important part about tying a drop shot is actually putting the hook on the line and how to do it correctly. We're going to tie this hook in line with what we call a palomar knot. So we're going to run the line through the eye, back through again. We create this loop right here. And then I'm going to take my tag in and I'm going to pull that to the distance I want my dropper. So I keep pulling on that. Let's say I want a 15 inch dropper. I'm going to stop right there. Then I'm going to tie an overhand knot with my hook. This is basically a palomar knot. I've tied my overhand knot. Now I'm going to pull that hook back through the loop I just created. Now here's the little twist at the end. I've got the hook palomar knotted in line. I'm going to take the tag in and I'm going to run that straight from the top of the hook down through the bottom of the eye of the hook. The reason we do this once I pull that everything tight, I have a hook that's going to stand out completely straight on my line. You can see how it's horizontal. I don't want to have the hook hanging vertically. I want everything horizontal. That's more natural. That's going to let your bait hang freely, give you more action, and obviously going to catch you more fish. Oh, I got one, Jason. There you go. Yeah, this feels like a pretty good Ooh, fish, yeah. too. He's pretty heavy. your rod right now. I'm getting a net on that one, Gary. For sure, that's about pretty good. No yeah. chance, I'm not taking any chance. Yeah, what you're saying is, I say it's a little one and it's a nice one. <laughs> oh, I can tell your rod is and the head shakes are good. He feels like a really good fish. He's fighting pretty hard. Oh yeah, he's a decent one. There we go. There yeah! We go. yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a good that's one. That's the one. A drop shot fish. Look how nice Look he is. Thing. Oh. 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 Yo, come, come here, on, buddy. Fish. 
That's it. Oh, and it was just the nicest bite. He wasn't going to come off. No. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't coming off. No. No. Perfect. It was. Oh, oh drop shot go. fish, man. Oh, look at them. That's awesome. The nicest bite. That's the nicest fish we've got today. I mean, look at that thing. Yeah. 22 inch. Yeah. Nice Gold. big fat one. I'll tell you, a fish like this in northern Wisconsin lakes on the 4th of July yep. with all the boat traffic. Uh, Look behind us, pontoons. It's unbelievable. Well, buddy, we're gonna let you go. It's your lucky day. Good job, buddy. <laughs> oh, there he goes. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Hot topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. Being tournament anglers, Gary and I are always looking for an advantage, not only how to catch more fish out there, but actually how to get more of the fish that bite into the boat. And so when Berkeley approached us a few years ago to put a different uh, hook on one of our favorite baits, the Flicker Shad, we were a little bit apprehensive. So what we did was actually test this bait. And what we did was test it over a couple of years, and what we found that this hook is actually super, super sharp, real sticky. And so if it touches anything, it gets that initial hook penetration. But then what's nice is it has a coating on it called Slick Set, which actually drives through the mouth quicker. And especially on a bony walleye mouth, that's real, real important. So we get better hookups. We also started looking at those Fusion 19 hooks for other techniques. Another great technique that you need a super sharp hook for is called Slow Death. And they've got a hook called the Slow Turn hook. What you need for slow death is that hook needs to form the crawler so that it spins underwater. Now the nice thing about their slow turn hook is, is that up on the top here you can see there's a little tiny bait keeper, a little backwards hook on there. So when you slide a real crawler, or in this case I'm using a killer crawler up onto that hook, it's actually holding that soft material on the hook better so that it'll stay down there and spin longer. It still has that super sharp sticky point, still got that slick set coating, so this is another hook that will just put more fish in the boat. So Gary and I are looking for a competitive advantage. We believe the Fusion 19 hooks give us that. I think it will give you an advantage too. Although both Gary and Jason have each been running a secondary dead rod, but after observing the walleyes consistently being a bit suspended over structure, not only adjusting the length of the dropper, but also playing with the cadence during their retrieves with their casting rods is all but sewing up the telltale end of this northern Wisconsin clear water drop shot walleye pattern. With the drop shot, you just want to pitch it out a little ways. You don't want to bomb it way out there. The farther out you go, the more angle you have on your line, uh, the, the closer to the bottom you're going to be. So keep it relatively close to the boat. As soon as the weight hits the bottom, all I like to do is just slowly shake the rod tip. I'm not trying to move that sinker back to the boat. Uh, the whole time picturing that lure just quivering in one spot. If I don't get bit in, let's say, 20 seconds or so, I usually reel it in about 10 or 15 feet, let the sinker go back to the bottom and repeat the whole process. Oh, I got one, Jason. <laughs> you got another one? Oh, yeah. Hey, this is a good you fish. That? Oh, Those yeah. Those are good head shakes. I got the net right here, ready I, to go. I was a big fish. It was weird. I was actually oh, moving. Wow, look at that rod. Yeah. I was actually moving it, and I lifted the weight up above the bottom. Yeah, that, that bait was probably six feet off the bottom when he hit. Oh, and he just came in and sucked it right in. Oh, boy. <laughs> you see those big bzzz? How he takes off like that? I see him. You see him? That's a walleye. He looks about the same size. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that one, Jason. That's the one. <laughs> oh, he pops off. He comes out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. You should have seen. I was just going to lift the weight, right, and move it towards me. 
And so I'm sl instead of just reeling like I was sometimes, I just lifted it and it went dunk. It <laughs> came up and it. Yeah, it I bet you the weight was off the bottom a little bit. So that that bait had to be four or five feet off the bottom. He was hungry. <laughs> he was. He wanted that. <laughs> he back came set. up and he drilled it. Oh my God! What an awesome fish. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow. <laughs> so I, I'm telling you. Most people would slip bobber stuff like this or maybe yep. jig fish. This is so much more yep. effective because you can move around, move these weights yep. and drop shots around in different spots on the on the humps and, and find the precise locations right. of the fish. And, and then when you find them, you'll whack them. And you're always in the zone, <laughs> yeah. you know where your bait is, yeah. and that's the result. So awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh uh, yeah, this is I'm so glad you showed me this. This is really neat. <laughs> awesome fish. <laughs> Woo! The next bite, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful fish. Go oh, pop daddy! Yeah! <laughs> it's a beast, it's a bass. Uh, ooh, I'm already like thinking sandwiches. Yeah, he puts a power play on me. Puts me in the rocks, it breaks me off, makes me tie leaders, and then that's when he catches the fish. So now I'm down a buck for the first. I'm down a buck because he has the most. And I'm down a buck because he has the biggest. You know, he planned this like perfectly. Hey, I didn't tell you to cast over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, another pounder. It's a base, no, it's a perch. We're gonna put the pieces of the puzzle together for this summertime pattern. Almost all the ways that I, almost all the ways. Well, he stayed down. Yeah, he did. Kind of fooled the guy. Thought I had one there, Gary. Looked like you did, the way your rod was reacting. Grouper, probably a miniature grouper. Awesome eater. The Next Bite.tv features seasonal articles, videos, and even full episodes. Whether it's catching up on the latest in tackle and techniques, reviewing your favorite past episodes, or seeing what is coming up just around the corner. For everything related to The Next Bite, check us out online or on Facebook at The Next Bite TV.